Okay, started your timer and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering the clinical examination station, can you begin? Uh, I will enter the room. I will wash my hands. Very I will. Uh, I will. Uh, I will introduce myself. Very I will, uh, Hello, I am Doctor Kuldeep. I am one of the surgical candidate. May I know your name and date of birth, please? Yes, um, forty years old, Mantha. Uh, hello, Mantha. Uh, today I have asked to examine your back and uh, your uh, your legs, and uh, I, it will include looking, feeling, and moving your back as well as leg. Are you okay with that? Yes. Uh, okay, Mantha. Uh, uh, do you so have Mantha. any pain? So, sorry, sorry. So, Mantha, uh, do you have any pain in your back or any leg, or shall I offer you any painkiller? That's all right. You can take Okay, thank you. Uh, would please uh, would you take off your gown, please? Okay. And you would you please stand for me? Very good. Yes. Uh, I will. Uh, I want you to walk for me. Just can you walk? Would you walk for me towards the wall? All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just turn around and just walk on your toes and your uh, first on your toes and then your own on your heels. Okay. I will not. I will not the. I will not the patient skate as well as I will check for whether the patient is able to wear bait on the toe walking and heel walking. Yeah, it good. determines. It determines whether patient is having L four neuropathy or L five S one neuropathy. Yeah, and good. I will check for uh, check for any uh, mobility devices like crutch or walking aid or anything. Yeah, now good. I will inspect. I will inspect the patient from the uh, from the front. I will look from the front. I will look from the side and I will look from the back. In from the front, I will look for any uh, shoulder. Symmetry, any list or anything. I will look from the side for the curvature of the normal spine, like cervical lordosis, cervical lordosis, thoracokyphosis, and lumbar lordosis. And posteriorly, I will look for asymmetry. I will look for wasting. I will look for any abnormal hair patch, any scar mark. Now okay. I will uh, I will ask the patient again. Do you have any pain in your back? Then if the patient said it is not there, then I will start with the palpation of the back, which includes first of all checking the temperature. I will rub my hand. I will rub yes. my hand to because the patient can can feel cold. I will rub my hand. I will ask the patient, you feel some cold because of the weather, and then I will uh, with the back of my hand, I will start the pelt. I will start checking the temperature from the back back up uh, from the upper spine till the lower spine. Then I will check for the midline tenderness. I will check for the para paraspinal muscle spasm, and I will check for the spasm at the. Uh, in, uh, I will check for the spasm. I, I will check for uh, tenderness at the SI joint. Uh, I will then I will uh, as the patient is a young patient I will look for the shoulder stress I will ask the patient I will mark uh, two points at your back is it okay with you ma'am yes I will I will first palpate the PSIS that is a, vein, a, a dimple of venous then I will uh, mark ten centimeter above and five centimeter below and I will ask the patient can can you please bend forward and I will ask specifically because in the history it is mentioned patient has a pain while forward bending I will ask the patient if ma'am there is a pain just let me know I will stop there and after and then I will ask the patient to forwardly bend and then I will measure normally it is more than twenty degree that. Excursion of the two points. If it is not there, it, it uh, denotes the uh, ankylosing disease, like ankylosing spondylitis. Now oh. I will check for the active movements of the uh, active movement of the spine. I will ask the patient to follow me, or you bend forward, then bend backward, and then bend uh, lateral lateral bend. Yes. If the patient is able to do that, I will proceed. The I will ask the patient to please lie down. And uh, I will again ask him if if she has any pain in his hip region. Then I will start doing passive XLR. I will ask the patient to keep relaxed. 
lie down properly then i will lift the ankle by cupping the ankle in my uh, palm and then i will slowly lift the lift the leg i will ask the patient again do you have any pain in your hip joint then i will lift the ankle joint i will lift the ankle joint i will check for the patient's expression if he if she has a tenderness or not then slowly i will bend the uh, bend the knee joint and ask the patient okay, do you have any pain in the knee joint then i slowly dorsiflex that i will push the uh, uh, ankle joint towards the patient's face and i will check for the wincing or tensioning of the nerve root then i will do the do the same over the opposite side and i will check for i will ask the patient to i will uh, check for the sensation in in her lower limb then i will ask the patient i will touch in your uh, upper limb if she feels the same then i will check for every dermatome like front of the leg lateral aspect of the thigh lateral border of the foot and the first web space then i will ask the patient i will check now i will uh, i i will going to uh, check the uh its sensation checking will include deep uh, uh pin prick as well as uh, light touch Good. then i will check for the uh, motor power i will ask the patient i will uh, i want you to follow some of the activities and uh, to stop me doing in that activity i will check for the power of l2 uh, which is a hip uh, hip flexors i will ask the patient to raise the leg but uh, to stop me uh, patient will start doing raising of the leg and i ask them to stop me i will push the leg downward and patient ask the patient to do it uh, against my resistance then i will do um, uh, l5 l3 which is extension of the knee then uh, l um, l4 which is dorsiflexion of the ankle uh, l5 that is ehl extension uh, greater greato extension and s1 that is um, s1 is plantar flexion i will check with the opposite side also and then i will check for the uh, tone of the lower limb that is called uh, leg lift and leg roll i will ju just gently uh, lift the uh, knee and uh, i will note that the uh, the heel should be touching the uh, flat of the bed and then i will uh, roll the leg uh, to to leg, uh, to look for the tone of that i will check the reflexes reflexes of the uh, lower limb which include ankle reflex and uh, knee reflex and i will check for clonus reflex by just uh, gently pushing the uh, ankle joint uh, dorsally and i will check for the arrhythmic contraction of the upper and lower limb okay uh, arrhythmic contraction of the foot can you present your case now uh, today i have examined a 40 or 40 year old female who she is a she is a waiter uh, waiter uh, who presented with a pain in the uh, pain in the lower limb and which was aggravated on bending forward she has a slr positive towards the left side and she has decreased sensation in the s1 dermatome like on the uh, first web space and she has a weakness of ehl very good so, so what are the differential diagnosis actually my first differential my first differential should be prolapsed intervertebral disc as l4 l5 lumbar canal stenosis at l4 l5 it can be due to diabetic neuropathy it okay. can be due to vitamin b12 deficiency all right uh, if it's uh, all right we'll discuss later how would you confirm your diagnosis ma'am i will uh, investigate the patient uh, through uh, i will investigate the patient through uh, mri of lumbosacral spine and x ray of lumbosacral spine all right what are the treatment or management options that you can offer i will discuss the i will discuss this uh, the treatment in multidisciplinary board including our orthopedic surgeon and neurosurgeon and i will start the patient on conservative therapy including analgesic and neurobiomimetic drugs if patient doesn't improve then i can go, uh, i can advise her a block based upon the uh, finding on mri or x rays then if it doesn't in if doesn't improve then i will need to discuss it further all right so if it doesn't improve with the conservative management what uh, other options can you offer to this patient ma'am if it turns out to be a, a peri uh, prolapsed intervertebral disc then we can go for a, a discectomy uh, that is a removal of the frag fragment or disc and ma'am if it is due to lumbar canal stenosis ma'am then we can go for a decompression surgery and if it is due to peripheral neuropathy then we have to manage the diabetes and the uh, rule out the causes of the peripheral neuropathy yes according to the cause very good okay well went right very good it was now i can see that after your conference you are studying you are focused so that is good all the examination was perfect it's just the last two three bits which were left uh, did you do coordination ma'am no ma'am actually yeah. i i, then, I left yeah coordination uh, and then clonus and then femoral nerve stretch test 
these two threes were left and yes ma'am everything else you had covered very superbly you didn't leave anything behind now when you presented your history you did say that patient has problem with bending forward it aggravates right yes because she is waitress and she has to serve so she has to bend forward her major problem is this and it gets relieved when she is walking down uh, downhill or something when she does not have to not downhill uphill uh, because she does not have to bend forward in that way so if you think what was your first uh, differential diagnosis uh, ma'am uh, as she is presenting with a, a, a typical radicular pain over the back yes. of your left left leg as well as she has a pain while bending forward this yes. is a typical uh, pain of prolapsed intervertebral disc no it's chronic here you have to focus you have to read the stem as well it's acute exacerbation of chronic lower back pain so it's acute okay i have written acute but doesn't mean it's acute acute so uh, and plus she has come in outdoor what i wanted you to think that uh, since the characteristic is pain aggravates while bending forward so it's spinal canal stenosis ma'am actually uh, uh, i tell you uh, not for this example purpose i will tell you uh, lumbar canal stenosis typically patient has a better uh, patient relief when she bend for when she mm -hmm. has a bending forward ma'am actually lumbar canal stenosis suppose right am i confusing myself yeah ma'am yes i tell you ma'am we have so many patients ma'am i operate on these kind of patients actually i am a spine surgeon uh, oh, no. <laughs> so i tell you ma'am actually i'm getting confused so uh, because i, I tell you aggravates spinal canal stenosis i uh, i ma'am i will tell you ma'am basic difference is in the lumbar canal stenosis ma'am it is mainly the ligamentum flavor hypertrophy yes. and when the patient bend forward there is a increase in the canal diameter which helps the patient relieving uh, help in relieving the relieving symptoms the pain. Yes. that's why ma'am uh, patient have a shopping cart sign when the patient goes out and she is like some lady shopping for market, grocery shopping and she has a claudication pain when she bend forward her pain better that is called shopping cart sign okay so it turns out to be that i'm confused yeah i tell you ma'am lumbar canal stenosis spinal, i thought it was it. spinal canal stenosis I... no ma'am lumbar lumbar canal stenosis ma'am pain, pain typically relieves on forward bending that's why ma'am patient of lumbar canal stenosis have a better result when she climbs upstairs when okay. patient climbs downstairs the, the back is in extension the patient uh, symptoms are uh, less uh, the so symptoms are the more lordosis pain is more when you are going downhill yeah yeah ma'am yeah yes ma'am is that correct now yes ma'am okay all right thank you so it turns out to be i'm confused right stop it on the timer here is your question Right. So, if you're brave and understood, considering the surgical anatomy station, kindly tell me what are you looking at? What are these uh, labeled points A, B, C, and D? Please. Looking at the hand from the dorsal aspect. Yes. The A is the extensor pollicis uh, longus tendon. Okay. Uh, B the B is the uh, Actually, A and B are the lateral and medial boundary of the anatom anatomical snuff box, and the the green triangle is the first web space. D okay. is the fifth fifth web, web web space. What is the what is the dermatom of D? D, uh, it's uh, C six. 
This green area is supplied by which nerve? Uh, supply the radial nerve. All right. This red area it marks uh, boundaries of one. One anatomical snuff box. Anatomical snuff box. Kindly please tell me the boundaries and the contents, please. It is bounded uh, posterior uh, anterolaterally by the two tendons, the abductor pollicis is longus and the extensor pollicis is brevis. Yes. And uh, posterior medially by the extensor pollicis is longus, uh, roofed by the skin fascia and the cephalic vein and superficial branch of radial nerve, and the floor by the scaphoid and trapezium, trapezium bone. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> content of the, the main content is the radial artery. All right, good. Can you please tell me what is the significance of uh, this anatomical snuff box? Uh, uh, it is an uh, important, uh, uh, the, since the floor is related to scaphoid bone, uh, here we see for ten, uh, look for tenderness, tenderness during for the... scaphoid fracture. All right, good. Then, can we, how would you rule out the fracture of the scaphoid bone? Uh, we have to do MRI, ma'am. Okay. First, you'll do the clinical, and then you can ask for MRI. Okay. Can you please tell me why uh, avascular necrosis of the scaphoid fracture is common? Yes, it is because uh, the because of the blood supply of the bone. It receives blood supply from the distal and the lateral branches of the radial artery. Uh, since the proximal part also receives from its distal aspect. Uh, when there's fracture involved in the proximal part, then there is avascular necrosis. Ma'am. All right. Okay. Especially when there is a fracture of the proximal third of the scaphoid. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Can you please tell me how would you, uh, what is the name of the test with which you can confirm the collateral circulation of the hand? It's called Allen's test. How, uh, how do you do it? Here we, <coughs> we ask the patient to raise the hand and flex it and, and make a fist and keep it for 30 seconds. Yes. And then we press uh, on the ulnar and uh, radial artery yes. and then ask the patient to open the open the fist. And then we release the ulnar, ulnar artery part mm -hmm. and we see the color change. There's erythema uh, within seven seconds. So that okay. means it's positive. Good. All right. Can you tell me the boundaries of extensor retinoplum? since we are doing the dorsum of the hand. Yes, extensor retin retinoclum, uh, it is the uh, space between the uh, wrist, wrist bones and the extensor retinoclum. The attachment. And it is. Yes, attaches between what to what? It and is attached many, from the. Yes. It is divided into six compartments. Okay. How is it different? Have... How is it different from flexor compartment? Flexor retinoclum. How many compartments there are in flexor retinoclum? In flexor, we have uh, the large yeah. one and the small one two. And in case no. of extensor, we have six. Okay, what are the structures which pass through it, and how is the how is the attachment? Can you please tell me from right to left or left to right? How is it attached? Extensor, ma'am. Extensor retinoclum, please. This one I'll come later, ma'am. All right, good. Uh, okay, that's the best question, uh, best answer. All right, we'll, can you please tell me if you are looking at the left uppermost image? Can you please tell me what are the structures that you can identify? You can see the uh, mainly the carpal bones and the proximal part of uh, radius and ulna and the uh, metacarpal bones. Yes. Can you identify? Can you tell me the carpal bones? Can you identify the carpal carpal bones? Which yes, one is uh, A? A is the scaphoid. Okay. Then can you tell me from scaphoid, lunate, uh, uh, tracheal, and pisiform, and yes, on the, the second row. Uh, the second row, we have uh, trapezium, trapezoid, capitis, and hamid. All right. So which one is attached to which? Uh, which one is attached to radius and which one comes in proximity with the ulna head? Uh, with the radius, we have the scaphoid and lunate and the 
uh, with the ulna we have the uh, okay can you uh, please tell me the, what are the movements which are possible at the thumb of the hand thumb we have uh, many five movements the flexion extension abduction adduction and the opposition okay these uh, movements are which nerves are responsible for these movements uh the uh, flexion uh, flexion uh, extension abduction uh, adduction mainly we have uh, the adduction is by the adductor pollicis which is supplied by ulnar nerve yes. and the abduction is done by the abductor pollicis which is supplied by the uh, uh, median nerve and the extension is done by the extensor pollicis longus which is supplied by the radial nerve can you please tell me what are the muscles which forms the bulk of uh, inner eminence Yes, uh, the main muscles are the opponent's pollicis, uh, 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 abductor pollicis brevis and uh, flexor pollicis brevis. And these muscles are supplied by which nerves? These are supplied by the uh, recurrent branch of the median nerve. Yes, uh, except? Except for the flexor pollicis brevis, long, uh, long head. Yes. So deep, you head, have to tell. deep head, which is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Because if you will not tell, then examiner will not ask you, it will not stress and ask you. Okay. Uh, can you tell me if a patient has weakened grip, then which nerve is injured or affected? The uh, weakened grip, uh, median nerve, ma'am. With the grip? Is it median? Ulnar nerve. I'll not, I'll not know. Think, think, think. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what is a hypothenar eminence and which nerve is responsible for innovation of hypothenar? Hypothenar eminence forms the middle aspect of the is on lies on the middle aspect of the palm, and formed by the uh, muscles. The they are the uh, flexor flexor digiti minimi, abductor digiti minimi, and opponent digiti minimi. Okay. Can you tell me what is compartment syndrome? Bell is gone, but we have to ask. Yes, compartment syndrome is a condition in which the uh, median nerve is compressed between the, in, in the carpal tunnel. Uh, what are so the risk compartment factors? Compartment syndrome. Syndrome, yes. So what are the risk factors which contribute to the formation of compartment syndrome? I missed, with, I mixed, missed it up with mixing. carpal tunnel syndrome. I'm asking carpal tunnel syndrome. Ma'am, you're asking uh, compartment syndrome, right, ma'am? No, why compartment syndrome? Com carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay. We are doing hand. No, I had this. Excuse me, I'm not that tired. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but you said you said compartment. <laughs> he said compartment, or I said compartment. No, I'm you sorry. said compartment. I'm sorry, sorry. ma'am. Carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> We're doing hand, okay, of course. We're not doing yeah. RTA. <laughs> All right. Yes, ma'am. All right, okay. Thanks. Right. So, started the timer, and here is your question. Right, so if you're great and understood, considering a surgical pathology station, kindly tell me what is your provisional diagnosis? Of this uh, my, provi my provisional diagnosis is carcinoid syndrome. Okay, yes. 
as uh, as patient has a, a typical uh, finding of abdominal pain flushes okay. hot flushes and uh, involving of the chest chest as well chest pain for uh, last two months and on examination on the lab examination uh, and on urine analysis it shows raised 24 uh, 24 hour urine raised of 5 uh, i double a that is 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid which is a uh, breakdown product of serotonin Oh, very good so what is the pathogenesis behind carcinoid syndrome Carc- carcinoid syndrome is the uh, it's a neoplasm of neuroendocrine cells which arises from the uh, cut uh, cutsnick cells uh, which secretes the catecholamines or which secretes the serotonin and which uh, enters the circulation and break down into various products like 5 uh, hydrox 5 uh, hydroxy acetic acid serotonin bradykinin which leads to the spectrum of the symptoms uh in the form of hot flushes abdominal pain diarrhea chest involvement and cardiac involvement okay what are the mode of investigations by which we can confirm our diagnosis we uh, uh we can uh, investigate we can investigate through a uh, plain radiography we can investigation through upper and lower uh, gi uh, radiography with co- oral contrast computer uh, ct scan magnetic resonance imaging angiography we can take a biopsy and we can subject the biopsy through uh, immunohistochemistry as well as biops um, uh, histopath what are the blood tests that confirms the diagnosis uh, uh, for the blood test ma'am we can get uh, uh, we can get uh, chromaffin uh, chromaffin cr- chromaffin a ma'am chroma chromaffin a because a. it is secreted yes. by, chromaffin a it, as it is secreted by the uh, as it secreted by the tumor cells we can go for a, uh, uh, we can go for 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid uh, urine analysis which That's because it urine. is secreted by yes for yeah. blood okay can you please tell me uh, where is it most commonly found ma'am it is found found most probably it is found in the lungs as well as in the gi tract ma'am okay what uh, you may be told me what is it related to what does it release ma'am it releases uh, it releases serotonin which degrades into uh, its de- degrades into various products like bradykinin histamine which lead to spectrum of the symptoms ma'am Okay. Did you tell me wh- how can you do the pathological diagnosis of this condition? Yeah, ma'am, uh, we can uh, do the uh, immunohistochemistry by using yes. chromaffin A granule, chromaffin A uh, testing, ma'am. Chroma, chroma, chromaffin B, B, chromaffin B. It becomes positive with that. Yes, okay. ma'am. Chromaffin B, ma'am. Uh, right. Can you help me and read this? Uh, this is A, B, C, and D. Why the, it's different, and what are you looking at? Please. Ma'am, these are the uh, uh, histopath of the tumor, ma'am, showing uh, uh, hyper chrom uh, hyperchromatic cells with the uh, hyperchromatic cells, ma'am, with the uh, that's yes. what I know, ma'am. Hyperchromatic cells, ma'am. with the uh... yes can you see can you concentrate these are of variable sizes and some are more uh, hydro more uh, stained and some are less i don't want to tell you though i'm, I'm not using the term so if you can see why there are clusters maybe you can tell me ma'am due to the secretory granules ma'am very good now you are telling me so you if you think and you because if you know the pathology pathophysiology then you can think and concentrate and then you can tell some granules are very very small and some are very prominent in large so that's also okay can you please tell me a uh, manifestation of carcinoid syndrome ma'am uh, patient can have a, a periodic abdominal pain patient yes. have due to bradykinin patient has a, a, a chest a dry what are cuff. the cardiac manifestations i'm really after ma'am uh, ma'am patient had a tricuspid stenosis as well as pulmonary stenosis ma'am due yes. to fat, due to infiltration in this Fibrous valves of endocardium as well okay how does it spread can you tell me ma'am uh, because uh, the cells produce beta catenin which helps in yes. adhesion of the cells tumor cells to the various or, various uh, organs it spreads mainly to the ma'am liver yes okay it spreads mostly to the liver and then how would a patient which has it spread to the liver would present with what symptoms ma'am, uh, 
बिकॉज अदरवाइज नॉर्मली लीवर मेटाबोलाइज द सिरोटिन प्रोडक्ट बिकॉज पेशेंट ऑलरेडी हैज मेट्स इन द लीवर द होल ऑफ द स्पेक्ट्रम होल ऑफ द स्क्रीशन विल नॉट बी गेट मेटाबोलाइज इन द बॉडी दैट्स वाई पेशेंट हैज ऑल द सिम्टम्स लाइक हॉट फ्लशीज एबडमिनल पेन डायरिया ड्राई कफ इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ द कार्डिक पेरिकार्डियम एज वेल एज ट्राई कैस्पिट पलमरी वेल्स Okay, can you please tell me in case of Carcinoid syndrome, there is inflammation, and then how these neutrophils migrate to the site of inflammation? Yeah, not neutrophil. First of all, neutrophil roll over the uh, roll in the uh, blood vessel. Then yes. it start adhere adhere to the. Then it's uh, activated. Then it start adhere to the endothelium. Then it uh, trans migrated, and then reach to the inflammatory site through chemotaxis, ma'am. Very good. Okay, can you please tell me these uh, carcinoid tumors often present with collection of fluids? What are these uh, collections called, or what are these called? What is abscess? In other words, uh, ab ma'am, abscess is a, a collection of a necrotic tissue induced by a pyogenic uh, bacteria, pyogenic or organism surrounded by a reactive uh, neutrophils. and surrounded by uh, surrounded by uh, uh, fibroblastic activity uh, denoting a, a healing process ma'am attempted right. healing in this condition what are the one blood specific blood test you've already told me what are the general blood test that check that you can do and they can signify the ma'am i will check for ma'am i will check for liver function test i will check for ma'am uh, uh, i will check for uh, uh, this uh, chromogranin a esr crp why yes esr crp and why esr ma'am because these are the acute phase reactant and it will increase uh, increase in the inflammatory process ma'am okay uh, these uh, carcinoid tumors are slowly growing type of neuro endocrines do you know any other types ma'am Uh, sorry ma'am do you know any other types these are the slowly uh, ones if there is any which are rapidly growing or any other type no ma'am sorry i come to this question later ma'am okay so most we have asked everything what are the risk factors uh, which you can avoid for this condition to take place or okay Ma'am, I will try to. Uh, whenever I will detect this tumor, I will try to have a complete excision. If I if I don't doesn't achieve a complete excision, I will start the patient on uh, ocrutide, which is anti uh, sero uh, serotonin agent, and I will start the patient on chemotherapy, ma'am. And I will have a surveillance after discussing in MDD board, ma'am. Very good. So that was treatment. Now the risk factors. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Like I don't know. For the risk factor. started and here is your question Right. So, if you have read and understood, considering the clinical examination session, can you begin? Yeah. Thank you, ma. Uh, first of all, I would wash my hands. I would uh, introduce myself to the patient, and also yes. I'll ask the patient. I'll confirm the patient's name and age. Yes. Then uh, I would want to uh, take permission and explain uh, what I'm going to do to the patient. And once yes. I've obtained a uh, verbal consent, then I would uh, expose the patient. my exposure in this patient will be i will expose the entire lower limb and also up to the uh, above the umbilicus just the abdomen and also the entire uh, lower limb with the patient having his briefs or his boxers on yes 
then I would uh, want to uh, reposition the patient. My examination will start with uh, the patient standing. Yes. I would want to inspect. While inspecting, this patient has a bilateral uh, involvement. So I would uh, start with um, the right, I would start with the right lower limb. I would want to inspect, I'll look at the skin, I'll note the varicosities along the, I'll check along the uh, long saphenous vein and also posteriorly along the small saphenous veins. I'll look for ulcers, I'll look for any form of skin changes like lipodermatosclerosis, atrophy blanche, any form of ulcers, any form of uh, discoloration, and um, I would uh, inspect for both uh, right and the left uh, lower limbs. Then I would also want to uh, inspect if there are also dilated veins in along the uh, pelvis, that's in the lower part of the uh, abdomen. Uh, I've been inspected. Uh, first of all, I'll take them before I start a um, palpation. I would ask the patient if the patient is having uh, any pain, any, if the patient has pain anywhere on the body, on the on my on the area I'm going to examine. Once I've confirmed that, then I will start uh, palpating. I want to palpate along the course of the major veins, that's along the small saphenous veins and also along the long saphenous veins. That's um, I want to palpate all the varicosities. Then also I'll do, um, uh, I'll test for any form of um, differential um, warmth from areas in which are not involved in the varicosity. And once I've done that, I would also feel for any uh, trail, any form of trail along the varicosities. Then I would, um, after I've done uh, any form, I'll do a, um, um, I'll check the saphen if there's any form of saphenal barracks. That's I'll go for the saphenofemoral junction and I'll palpate. I'll feel for any form of uh, uh, barracks along that side. Once I've uh, done that on palpation, then I would um, move to, I would want to uh, conduct a, a lot of, uh, I'll conduct specific tests to actually know what type of uh, varicosity the patient has and also if they are if there's any form of saphenof, if it's a primary or a secondary varicosity, if it's a primary, there might be saphenofemoral uh, valve incompetence and also might have associated perforator incompetence. So I'd want to do a Trendelenburg test right now. Once this patient will now lie down, once I want to conduct this Trendelenburg test. So I would want to empty the vein. Once I empty the vein, I will locate the saphenofemoral junction, which is 4 cm. I will locate the pubic tubercle. The saphenofemoral junction is inferior lateral, 4 cm inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle. Then I will apply my tourniquet below the saphenofemoral uh, junction. Uh, I, would, I would empty the vein first by raising the, uh, the, the, uh, the limb I'm examining at that point in time. Then I will attach the, then I'll put my uh, tourniquet below the saphenofemoral junction. Then I will ask the patient to um, stand up if there's any form of feeling above where my, my uh, tonic is being ap uh, applied, it means there's a form of a, the Trendelenburg test is positive and there's a saphenofemoral valve incompetence. Then I would also want to, then if I put the tonic again and I release the tonic and there's filling of the veins distally, that's in the limbs. If uh, I, would, I would watch out for any filling of the uh, veins in the lower, in the, on the leg, if there is, it shows there's a form of perforator incompetence. And when I remove the tourniquet, if the filling is so rapid again, it confirms uh, perforator incompetence. And that's a, a negative uh, Trendelenburg test. Then I would want to do a tourniquet test. Tourniquet test will now help me to identify the actual uh, perforator that is affected. If it's the adductor canal uh, perforator, or uh, the one that is below the knee and also ankle, because there are three major perforators that connect the superficial vein and the deep veins. So I'll do this and I'll be releasing the tourniquet sequentially to know the actual perforator that is affected. Then also I'd want to conduct uh, a Pertis test. The Pertis test is to identify if there's any form of- Modified Pertis test. Can you modified Pertis test. Yes. To know if there's any form of deep venous thrombosis. So I would apply my tourniquet and uh, I would tell the patient to be uh, to tiptoe. Patient will tiptoe severally and then subsequently patients will walk. If there's any form of pain, it shows there's a associated deep venous thrombosis. And this will also guide me in my management. It means I wouldn't strip the superficial veins. 
if the deep veins are thrombosed. So having uh, done all, having conducted all these tests, I also want to do, and I want to con conclude my examination by doing an abdominal examination and also an arterial examination. An abdominal examination because there might be uh, a mass in the rectum and you have a pelvic mass which might be okay. compressing and also- Can you please present your, present your examination okay. now? Okay. Uh, in, um, I presented a 55 year old uh, male that has a bilateral uh, lower limb uh, varicosity. Um, he has um, by he has uh, he has bilateral uh, saphenofemoral junction incompetence and also uh, the ankle perforators are also incompetent. Um, the Pertis test is um, negative. Is um, uh, other findings are. There are no any forms of dilated veins in the abdomen. So I feel that my patient has a, a bilateral primary uh, varicose vein. And I would want to manage him by taking uh, it, by, by completing my examination by doing an abdominal and also an arterial examination. Then I would um, subsequently uh, take a good history and I'll manage him afterwards. So what are the history. investigation options that you can advise for this patient? Okay, the investigation options are the use of a, a, hand, dupl a hand Doppler ultrasound scan, which will also help me to uh, identify, to look at the flow pattern of the, uh, the, the flow pattern of the uh, venous system, the lower limb veins, and also I could combine it doing, using a duplex. The duplex is uh, more it also looks at the tissues, has a combination of both the Doppler and also looks at the uh, adjacent tissues. Okay, uh, can you tell me if there was a female patient uh, with the varicose veins and she was using oral contraceptive pills? So what would have been your advice for that patient? Yeah, my advice is, uh, I'll come back to the, I'll come back to the question. Ma. Okay. I'll come back to the All right. So what are the non-invasive management that you can offer this patient? Uh, the, the invasive, uh, non-invasive. Yes, please, non-invasive. Non-invasive, I could do a serial uh, pneumatic uh, compression. I could do a, a pneumatic compressions to aid with the flow of the uh, veins. Then uh, I could also, those are the, and also would also ensure that uh, uh, yeah, those are, those are usually the, the non-invasive. Then the invasive ones are the foam sclerotherapy, then um, some of also injection sclerotherapy, then the most invasive is foam the venous sclerotherapy. and radiofrequency, these are the non-invasive Yes, radio, radiofrequency ablation. Yes. yes, these are the non-invasive ones. Okay, yes, now, yes. thank you so much. I think this is first time you have presented. It was good. Yes. Uh, yes. I was going to say. So when you, uh, it was very good how you how you started off. You exactly knew which examination to do when, but when you, after doing inspection, until inspection, it was very good. When you started a palpation and you had to discuss varicose veins, then uh, you, did you look out for blowouts? Pagan for what? Or blowouts? Uh, okay, I didn't mention it. But I'm, yes. I'm supposed to. And the for Schwartz it. test as well, and the lower limb edema. You have to look okay, in the medical yes, vein. Yes. Palpation. Yes. And then when you okay. were doing, you said you, if there is spinaverics, you look for it. But there are certain tests yes. that you have to do for spinaverics. Like you have to do look for the thrill. You have to look for the impulse on cuff. You have to look for the pulse and the compressibility. Then uh, yes. when you were telling me about the special test, you told me very well about the Trendlenburg test and modified Pertis test was also good. One last test that, uh, because in this one, it is very important, you have to do handheld Doppler. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So in this All one, right. if you miss that, so when you, uh, when I, when Bell goes and I say, okay, can you present your case now? So then you can say, I examined, not presented, examined. And then you do, you can say that uh, time if time would have allowed, like you told me, if time would have allowed, you'll do the examination abdominal and vascular. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, arterial. Right. Sorry, arterial and abdominal. So then you can say that I would have done 
Doppler and, Doppler. and Harry Doppler okay. as well. So good. Thank uh, you, yeah. So that was all I would want you to add in your examination. And at the end, uh, thank, you can you. thank the patient as well. Like if, as yes, soon as yes, bell goes, you can say thank you. You can yes. dress up now. Yes, Dr. Yes. Wash yes, my hands. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Um, Abdulaziz. I have a question. The for the uh, modified pathes uh, test. Yes. The patient has to work for a few minutes. How do we do that in the exam? Since with the tourniquet have, uh, on. Yes. Yes, we tourniquet on for five like five minutes. How? Ah, uh, not five minutes. Have... Just five seconds. You can maybe ask the patient to do it. Okay, five seconds. Then we can remove it. Okay. Ma. Yeah, because there'll be only one tourniquet available and. Thank you. Yeah. But this test will be, will be negative if like a patient has primary varicose veins, like doctor said. All right, ma. thank you. Ma. But then you can ask, you can look at the examiner and you can ask for more, more tonicates, but examiner will say, sorry. So at least uh, they know that you know that you have to ask for more. Because there is another test, multiple tourniquet test, that uh, should also be done in this in case of special test. Okay, so that you have also missed. In that case, you have to look at the examiner and uh, ask if there is any more uh, tourniquets I can get, and he will say he or she will say, "I'm sorry, we don't have any more." So that means it's you have scored one point. Good. Starting and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering the clinical examination session, can we begin? Yes. Hello, I'm Dr. Daffer, one of the surgical doctors looking after you. Uh, could you confirm your name and date of birth, please? Uh, after he confirmed name and date of birth, I will <coughs> take the consent. We are and today, we now to need to examine your cranial nerve, which that means includes the looking, feeling, and some sense taste, and also. We do the memory uh, test. Is that okay? Okay. So we will start. And do you have any any change? Do you have any pain at all? No. If you have, just uh, tell me. Just let me know. So for olfactory nerve, I just asking about any change in the smell. If he said no, I will go to the uh, optic nerve. I will check the visual acuity. If the, I ask the patient if they if he ha, if he wear a glasses, you should wear the glasses during the doing test. I said the patient in a frost senile chart for six meter, and I check, and also to check double vision, I check uh, the pupil reflex, and direct reflex, I apply the light on the UI, and looking for the construction of the pupil, uh, in the direct and consensual, and swinging reflex, also I, look, I tell the patient to looking the for the any point in the wall, and then point to the our finger for accommodation. <clears throat> also, I will do visual field, visual acuity, uh, visual field uh, by the sitting the patient. I told the patient to sit in the front and looking for my face, and uh, I put the, my hand between the between the patient and I ask him if they see if he see my hand wiggling or move. Tell, just let me know, and I repeat that with the one eye closed, 
if he closed the eye, uh, right eye, I close the left eye and recheck. Uh, after that, I will go to examination by the fundoscope uh, if, uh, to see the retina, macule, and optic nerve. And also, I will go to the oculomotor, retrochilia, and abducens. By the, uh, I ask the patient to sit down and look for me and follow my finger by the eyes, not by the turn hand. I do a shape, uh, a shape, and looking if there is double vision or if any nystagmus. And then after that, I will go to the trigeminal. I ask the patient to, to clinch them, clinch again and uh, feel the temporalis. I clinch again, please, to feel the masseter muscles. Also, I, I told the patient, uh, there is the cotton. Uh, it's feel like that. I will say, feel the sensation in your face. Please close your eyes. I feel the frontal in both sides, uh, maxillary and mandible. And I check if it is the same or not. And after that, I will check uh, jaw reflex and uh, jaw reflex and uh, corneal reflex. Jaw reflex by the uh, closing your mouth against resistance and uh, by the hammer, I click the, in, uh, on the jaw. A facial nerve, I, I told him, well, we need to elevate your eyebrow. Close your eye, uh, close your eye. don't let me to open. Uh, blow your cheek. Uh, show, blow your cheek, smile. Can you whistle? Can you smile? Uh, uh, can you, can you uh, stretch your neck muscles to show, to show if there is any, any, any deformity or any abnormality? Also, I asked him uh, if there is, if he hear the sound is louder or not. If any change in the taste, no. I will go to the uh, vestibular cochlea. Can you close your eye, please, and, uh, and um, march on spot? And then I inspect the eye, uh, I inspect the ear. Uh, if there is any herpes, the can uh, if the herpes trauma any any things, I will do Weber test and the, the Weber test and also renin test. I will also examine the ear by the uh, oroscope, uh, otoscope. Uh, then I will go to the to ask. How would you to, How would you use otoscope? By the, like the pen, by the like, uh, uh, pin, uh, cast the pin, pin uh, ear helicus and remove uh, movement out, outward. Yes. To separate and... the tu the tube and the. Uh, Pass the pass the, the light on the uh, on the autoscope to the to the ear to looking for the any, any scar any marks ear uh, lobule how out by and? by 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 stretch outward upward upward okay. and anywhere in pediatric downward okay, okay. but uh, you'll only be concerned about adults yeah. okay continue please. okay. I'm looking for the for uh, looking for the uh, uh, unique injury if the arteria, rhinuria, uh, wax, deformity, boils. Have you checked the pharyngeal nerve? What? Pharyngeal. Yes. Glossopharyngeal. Okay. Which glossopharyngeal. It's, it's, it's glossopharyngeal. No, no, no. no, no. I just uh, 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 glossopharyngeal. And then... Facial. And okay. vestibular, and then the glossopharyngeal by asking the patient to open his mouth. Yes. I'm looking at the and ask him to cough, or please cough for me, please. Yes. Can you take the piece of a piece, a sip of water? Take it. Okay. Can you swallow it now? Yes. Okay, good. Can you present yeah. your case now, please? So, uh, according, I examined 30, 32 years ago. 23 girls, years. 23. 20, 20, 23 years ago, girls. He presented the emergency with headache by the by examination. I feel uh, just in it. Uh, I uh, I examined the uh, the cranial nerve, starting by the olfactory. It is normal. Ophthalmic. It is normal. Uh, uh, ophthalmic normal. Oculomotor normal. And for ear, it's looking uh, the conductive hair conductive ear in the hair deafness. Yes. Yeah. So, what are your and differential diagnoses? It is uh, it is basal basal skull fracture. 
Okay, based on the skull fracture. Mm -hmm. So, how what investigations would you do to confirm your diagnosis? For to confirm my diagnosis, I will send it for the CT scan MRI, yes. and also. Okay, what are the treatment options that you can offer this patient? Uh, uh, a treatment option, I will, uh, uh, firstly, I, 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 uh, according to the CRISP protocol, uh, assessment to the airway, airway and treatment, I breathing and the management and the circulation and management. I, can you tell me what are you looking at? I'm you looking for the, this, look this is, through the, yes, you examine this and this is from which side? This is uh, uh, this is the picture for endoscope for, uh, for from the external ear, and this is the tympanic membrane. It is bulging with in the, with inflammation with hematoma. This is maybe due to so what the is the management of hemotampinum? Tampinum. What are the causes? Uh, what happens? Is it uh, yes? It's the hearing conductive hearing loss, or it's the conductive hearing loss. Yeah. And, and, in, effect, in, in, this, in, in the, in the, in the affected side. Okay. Hmm. I didn't understand what you, what you, your, your point was question. Oh, your question. So this one, uh, this image that you're looking at, uh, looking at is from yeah. which side? How would you know? Once you have, uh, once the cone of light, it ends or it, uh, it the lands cone of light there. Is yes. How would you it's know? Inferior. It's there inferior. It's inferior, eh? There, on Infer this side. Infer on the right side, oh, sorry. On right side or left side, at what? Uh, at what? This is the right. This if is you the can tell me, imagine side. the clock and then tell me at four o'clock, yeah. at six o'clock there. Please. It's it's four o'clock. It's it's about right, a four o'clock. Right. Okay, good. I had to confirm that you know. I'm sorry. Mm. Okay. Right. So right. Good. You examination is very long. I understand you didn't get to yeah. complete it. But then I have many times said, even when uh, the one you have presented uh, lacked many things. You'll go back. You'll yeah. listen to the recording, and you'll realize. There are yeah. many things that you have missed. You'll practice, we'll practice. This was the only purpose okay. was to practice, right? Not to okay. be perfect. And then, uh, yes, you revise and we'll practice. And then at the end, when I asked you to present the things that you had forgotten, or, or no, not forgotten, I'm sorry, the things that you couldn't cover because of the shortage of time, you have to yeah. say it. You have to mention Yeah, because of... Uh, because mentioning is as good as doing it. So you can yeah. score your complete marks. So that's just my one little request. Thanks. Started and here is. Yes. Yes. Read, read. So if you have read and understood, can say then get to the presentation. Can you begin? Okay. Um, I would come into the bay and wash my hands. Um, good, if, good evening, um, ma'am. I'm Dr. Abbas. I'm an SHO in the hospital. I have been um, asked to interact with you. Um, can I confirm your, 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 your name and age? I am 66. Uh, my name is Mary. Okay, okay. Can I, do you, would you mind if I call you Mary? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right, all right, Mary. Um, I was told um, you have um, a swelling on your neck 
for how long has he been? Doctor, it is for last 10 years. Okay. Um, um, have, have you, um, I was told also um, that there was some changes to the swelling. Can you explain, uh, can you tell me what has happened to the swelling in the last 10 years or afterwards? Doctor, it was stationary for last 10 years, but for the last two months, it, I noticed there is an increase in the swelling. And f along with that increase, I have seen, I suffer from a difficulty in swallowing the food, especially the solid food. I am not able to take that. Okay, so sorry, Mary. Have you noticed any other swelling in any other parts of your neck? Any other parts no, of your body? No, doctor. Okay, um, and, um ha, the, the swelling, um, when did you, okay, you noticed it 10 years ago, as you, have you, and then it became rapidly grown in the last two years. Have you noticed um, any No, doctor, last two months. Two doctor, months, okay, is, is it painful? Yeah, doctor, it is now paining, it has some pain also. Okay, so sorry, so sorry, Mary. Um, have you also noticed um, any uh, any swellings aside from this particular swelling around your neck? No, doctor. I haven't seen any. Any swellings in your scalp? No, doctor. Okay. Um, have you um, noticed that there are um, there is also the problem with your so um, breathing? Have you any breathing problems? No, doctor. I don't have any breathing issues. But doctor, I have seen that in my voice has changed recently. Oh, so sorry about that. Um, um, what's your occupation, Mary? Sorry, doctor. Your occupation. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a retired teacher. I'm a retired teacher, doctor. Okay, Mary. Okay. Um, um, have you um also noticed um that you any problem with? Uh, have you noticed that you get warm excessively, or um, when every other when the temperature is cold, you feel as if you're hot? No, doctor. I don't have any heat or cold tolerance, intolerance. Okay, okay great. Have you noticed them um, um, weight loss? Any recent yeah, weight loss? Yeah, How doctor. I have the weight loss. My uh, my clothes get loose, doctor. I lost almost four pounds of weight in last six weeks. Oh, so sorry, Mary. So sorry. Um, have you um have it was, and it wasn't deliberate whether you wanted to not, um, lose weight. No, doctor. It is unintentional, doctor. I was not on diet. It was unintentional. So sorry, Mary. Um, That's concerned you... me. Oh, so sorry. Okay. Do you have any um, other concerns aside from this? Doctor, I was a little bit concerned about my change in voice as well as a rapid change in the swelling for last two months. Along with the unintentional weight loss, I'm greatly concerned with these three so sorry, Mary. Yes, um, um, I would continue interacting with you, and then when I'm done, we'll can further talk about um what um what I think your problem is and how we would um take care of you. Um, and also, Mary, um, did you notice any change in your menstrual period? Are you no. have you are you when was your last menstrual period? Um, or Dr. are you postmenopausal? I already attained Doctor Menopause at the age of fifty. Now I'm sixty six year old. Okay, Mary. Um, when did you notice any cough or difficulty breathing? No, doctor. I don't have any issues with that. Okay. Do you have you noticed any change in your behavior in the last um, two months? Doctor, so, because of this symptom, difficulty in swallowing and pay, voice change, I have sometimes feel I'm at, at my nerves, and I have oh, sometimes yeah. got angry, but I don't feel any mood disorder or anything. Okay, um, and you don't have forgetfulness or headache? No, doctor, I don't have okay. that. Okay, any back pain? Sorry, doctor? Back any pain? back pain? No, no back pain, doctor. I don't have okay. any pain. Do you have, um, um, have you noticed that you are having, uh, um, um, have, you, have you noticed uh, any change in your, um, do you smoke or take alcohol? No, doctor, I, am, I don't smoke, I don't take any alcohol. Okay, any family, anyone in your family that has a similar history to this? No, doctor, I don't. Okay, does anyone, are you taking any medication, any drugs? No, doctor, I was okay. not on any medication. Okay, um, are, are you hypertensive or diabetic? I'm doctor, I'm a diabetic, I'm on oral hypoglycemic agents. Okay, which of them? I am on metformin, doctor. Okay, okay, so sorry, Mary. Um, have you had any surgeries in the past? No, doctor. 
Okay, any allergies? No, no, doctor. I'm not allergic to anything. Okay. Um, since this illness started, have you had any um, have you seen any one for it? Or have you had any treatment for it? Sorry, doctor. I can't have get you, you been have you had any treatment for this illness? No, doctor. Or have you seen any? This is your first time. Okay. Um <coughs> okay. Can you um, present your history now, doctor? Yes, ma'am. I've um interacted with Mary. She's a 66-year-old um, retired um, school teacher who presented with a history of um, a lump in an anterior neck lump um, of, six, of 10 years duration, but um, um, noticed um, a rapid increase in the size of the lump in the past two months. Mm -hmm. Also has a history of um, difficulty swallowing, um, especially of solid foods, um, but um, also noticed that, um, and then as it had changed in voice, and uh, um, 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 unexplained, um, unintentional weight loss in the past um, six weeks. So what are your has, yes? What are your differential diagnosis for this patient? Uh, thinking she has a malignant um, thyroid swelling. Please be specific. Okay. Um. Um. Possibly a um. Toxic multinodular um, glycosidor. <coughs> Um, she, she is uh, likely a um, malignant thyroid. Okay, um, and yes, thyroid malignancy likely um, a, um, a papillary, considering the fact that she has a long standing um, goiter, which okay. recently began demonstrating. Any, any other condition you consider? Yes, ma'am. Um, it can also be a, a toxic um, um, multinodular goiter. Okay, what are the yes. management options that you can offer this patient? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would want to um, do a okay a management. Um, okay, investigate and treat. But um, treatment options includes. Um, I would want to investigate. Um, take sample for do a fine needle aspiration cytology um, to obtain biopsy and to um, rule out malignancy. Um, and then, what is um, triple assessment? Okay, triple assessment yes. involves um, um, hi hi um, history examination, yes. um, imaging, and um, FNAC. Um, FNAC, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma what, is, um, uh, what are the treatment options? Bell is gone, but then you went okay, very slow. Oh, sorry, ma'am. The um, treatment options um, include uh, uh, um, um, tot um, total thyroidectomy with yes. um, lifelong thyroid zinc replacement. Can you tell me three complications as a, which can occur as a result of total thyroidectomy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, patients may develop um, um, post-operative um, um, post-hematoma, uh, which may result in um, 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 airway obstruction and difficulty breathing in the post-operative period. Patient may also have um, hypocalcemia, hypocalcemia yes. um, hy hypothyroidism, and um, hypo um, parathyroidism too. And the risk of or the injury to, to the recurrent laryngeal nerve tumor. Yes, good. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you.